Open your Bibles to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2. I, I feel almost like having uh, Pastor Brent read my text because he, he just has that dramatic flair about it, but I'm afraid if we did that, he would want to preach as well, and it's, it's my turn. You know the story, the Lord Jesus was born wrapped in swaddling clothes and laid in a manger because there was no room in the inn. And then that very same night, there were shepherds abiding in their fields, keeping watch over their flocks. Now, it's interesting, when the angel appears, the very first words are, fear not, because obviously they were greatly sore afraid. Now, during the daytime, the shepherds had the responsibility to feed the sheep and to care for the sheep. But uh, as far as dangers, other than the occasional wandering of a sheep, there wasn't a lot of danger. But at nighttime is when the shepherds had to be on their guard. Uh, The wild animals, the predators would come at night. You remember David, when he was trying to convince Saul to let him go fight against uh, Goliath, he said, hey, when I was watching my father's sheep, uh, a a lion came and a bear came, and I was able to kill both of them, and so certainly I can take this giant. And so at nighttime, there was obviously a fear of lions and bears and tigers, oh my, uh, uh, wolves. I don't know if they had coyotes in that part of the country, but uh, there was that. There was also the the, uh, uh, potential for their sheep to be stolen. Uh, Somebody might uh, come in and uh, uh, walk off with one or more of their sheep, and so they, they, they had to be on guard. And so the appearance of this angel was just absolutely uh, there, just... Think about having your, your nerves on edge. I, I don't know why. I've never been able to figure, figure it out psychologically. But when I was growing up, I always had this fear of burglars coming into our house. We had nothing worth stealing. But evidently, I saw the wrong television program at one time. And it became indelibly impressed on my mind that burglars were after us. And so occasionally I would wake up in the night thinking that I heard a burglar. And all of my nerves were just very, very on it. One time I went in and woke up my dad. Dad, what do you want? There's a burglar. There better be. And he got up and walked through the house with me, and there was obviously no burglar. But I I can imagine that at one time when I thought I heard a burglar, if there actually was a burglar, I probably would have just fainted dead away. (laughs) And so these guys who were guiding and caring for their sheep, they were always on guard for danger, but certainly hoping no danger would ever come, and boom, suddenly, an angel appears. And they were sore afraid. Let's read that text again and remind ourselves of how God calmed their fears. Stand with me. If you're able to, Luke chapter 2, and we'll begin in verse number 8. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not. For behold, I bring you good tidings, a great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Father, I thank you for those wonderful words of comfort. Fear not. Lord, I pray that as we look at this tonight, in this short time, that you would just encourage your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Be seated, please. Fear is a natural instinct 
It's a natural way of preservation that God has given to all of us. We're, we're afraid if there's danger, or we're, 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 we're frightened sometimes by the unknown, or if there's a potential for, for hurt or pain, it, it makes us afraid. I remember last summer, our youngest grandson, Kyle, was all excited because he had ordered shock gum. I said, what's shock gum? He said, it's not really gum. It looks like gum, and when you pull a piece out, you get shocked. He said, I can't wait to get this. And so after weeks and weeks, because it came from China, after weeks and weeks, his, his shock gum finally came. And he was all excited by now. School is in session. He's all excited to bring his shock gum to school and try it on all of his friends. And his dad said, well, you're not going to shock your friends till you do it first. And for about four days, he's trying to get his courage up. <laughs> To pull out that piece. Somebody had told him that it's possible to get electrocuted. <laughs> he doesn't mind if his friends are electrocuted. But sure enough, if there's going to be a random execution, it'll happen to him. And so the poor little guy was just scared about getting shocked. Finally, he overcame his fear, he survived it, and he was able to shock all of his friends, which every young man loves to do. But you understand, there's a fear of the unknown, or a, or a fear of pain. And on this particular night, the angel of the Lord appeared to them. They'd never seen an angel, they'd never seen a phenomenon like this, as the glory of the Lord showed round about him. Obviously, they were sore afraid, and immediately the angel said, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. What were they afraid of? Well, I'm sure they were afraid of death. You know, death is a normal fear. I read Charles Spurgeon one time. I've always been of the mindset that I would prefer to go with the upper taker than the undertaker. Amen. I would much rather go in rapture than die by natural causes. I, I just would. But I was reading and Spurgeon said he hopes that the rapture doesn't come during his life because he wanted to die to experience what Jesus had done for him. I thought, man, I wish I was that spiritual, but I still want to go in the rapture. I'm not afraid of what's after death, but we're all frightened by the prospect of death. Those who don't know Christ, those who have no assurance, they're frightened by what comes after death. I was in the third grade. There was a girl behind me who was just an ordinary girl. I didn't know her well. Her name was Leanne. One day I, I heard her crying. It's not unusual for girls in third grade to cry because they're babies. About something at some time, but... I turned around and I said, what, what's the matter? And she said, I'm afraid. And I said, afraid of what? And she said, I'm afraid to die. That was pretty heavy for a third grade boy. And so I said, are you sick? No. No. Are you thinking you're going to die real soon? No, but I'm afraid. I didn't know anything about the Lord back then, but 
I understand that now. An unsaved person with no hope obviously would be afraid to die. These shepherds might have thought that this was the end. They were old, might, might have thought there was great danger for them. Or, or, or at very worst, that this angel or whatever this was that had appeared to them was going to rob them of their sheep and they would be responsible. If they were the owners of the sheep, then, then in that case they would be without. Or, or if they were watching the sheep for somebody else, they would be responsible. And so there's fear. But the angel said, fear not. He said, I've got the answer to everything you ever have been afraid of. I have the solution to anything that would cause you to be afraid. Fear not, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And so immediately their fears were calmed. Immediately they were reassured. Can I remind you that because of Christ, none of us ever have anything to be afraid of. There's no need to fear death because there's a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Oh, we may suffer in this life and we may go through some some difficult times, but we understand that we are on the very, very short side of eternity. And one of these days when this mortal life is over, we'll be with the Lord, clothed in a brand new body, all of our sorrows and heartaches gone forever. We'll be with Jesus who loved us and gave Himself for us. Oh, there's no fear in heaven. We have that promise of God's presence who said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. But I really like the way that he describes it in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5 and 6. He says, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee, so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper and I will not fear. What man shall do unto me? Oh, what a great thing to know that He's with us in this life. He's with us as we leave this life, and He's certainly with us in our eternal life. There's no need to worry about danger. He promised Abraham in Genesis, uh, after these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abraham, I am thy shield. And thy exceeding great reward. God is our shield against Satan. God is our shield against uh, sin. God is our shield against sorrow and suffering. He, he is our exceeding great reward. Oh, I understand, just like the shotgun, none of us look forward to that whatever it is. Whatever it is that causes us concern or even fear. But the Lord has already promised, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. And so, in the midst of that which causes us to tremble, the Lord says to us, like the angel said to the shepherds, fear not, fear not. Isaiah 41, 13. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. I remember when I woke my dad up to go search for burglars. He said, Where did you hear them? I said, In the house. He said, Where? I said, All over. And so we started down the hallway. My dad flipped the light on and I was walking behind him. Lying in my bed, I was scared to death, but walking with my dad, I wasn't worried at all. In fact, I was kind of looking forward to my dad whipping up on that burglar. (laughs) 
And so we went from room to room, flipping on lights and opening closets and searching under the couch in case he was a skinny burglar. And we looked through the whole house. And my dad said, he must have left. And I'm thinking, yeah, if he knew what was good for him, he's gone and he won't be back. And so we turned off all the lights and I went back to bed. And Just a few minutes before, I was terrified. But now, I was completely confident. Because I knew that there was one who would protect me. Amen. Can I remind you, every now and then... It's as if we wake up quickly and we're startled and we are afraid. But then God says, don't worry. I'll be beside you. I'll take your hand. I'll protect you. What a blessing. What a blessing. When those concerns come, when those worries come, understand that's normal, that's natural. But God says, fear not. Luke 12, verse 7, Jesus said, Are not five sparrows sold for two farthings? And not one of them is forgotten before God, but even the very hairs of your head are numbered. Fear not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. God knows what our needs are. God knows what our situation is. God is committed to us. And so we can be comforted that not only is God our protector, but God is the one who loves us supremely. God is the one who, who made us for His pleasure. God is the one who, is, who told us it's not by might nor by power but by my spirit, saith the Lord. It's God who told us that the arm of flesh will fail us, but God will never fail. And so in times of concern, and times of uncertainty, and times of worry and even fear, I want to remind you of that wonderful message that the angel said to the shepherds, Fear not. Why? For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And that child born in the city of David is your Savior and mine, your protector and mine, your comfort and mine, our Redeemer and our help in a time of trouble. Father, thank you.